she knows us in an in and out because she has been seeing us from past like 14 years yeah. so she knows our childhood uh she knows our teenage uh, tantrums she knows us as adults so she has been a friend she has been a sister so she knows us in and out so yeah i love my teacher yeah um i think about especially when you said about teenage tantrums i don't i especially think in india people just don't understand that at all so like when you make yeah. a mistake or um something like that they're all like i just don't think they understand in general so they get mad but i think that's very special <laughs> So also my teacher she's very I would say she's very special to me. She's I think when my mom was looking for a teacher she wanted to look for a teacher that was very like like friendly but not only like like would dance but also wanted to like connect with the personal level. And yeah. So she yeah. That teachers, but they were very like like not like bad they were just like not that like friendly or like bubbly basically. Mm. She So that's what happened. So also she's almost like a mom figure to me, my dance teacher. Yeah. <laughs> that's sure. true. That's re- that's true. Yeah, and obviously I have Mrs. Raju's picture here in my little dance studio. Oh, that's so know. lovely. But yeah, so I don't know if you recognize. Yeah, one picture just fell, but um this is you know who that is? Um Vampire. Yeah, that is Master Garu. <laughs> that's me and my teacher and then that's her. Yeah, so basically for my runga probation practice i just didn't know where to practice and so my basement was unfinished so then i my mom <laughs> helped me paint all the floors paint the walls and then we and then i just wanted to put like some inspiration pictures up so i also told her i was like you are a really big inspiration to me can i put up a picture of you and so yeah everything it was yeah she's one of my so nice. people in like dancer yeah that's so nice Um what was your favorite part when you do a performance My favorite part uh, in performance so I would say so just before I'm entering in, onto the stage so I just take a long breath you know that small uh, tirmanam they play before starting yeah. the an item so this is before going on to stage to perform that particular item or something so i just take a long deep breath and i'm like just kill it just don't think about anything don't look at the crowd don't just look at the light just be yourself and then dance it out i i always go on to stage thinking it's my last performance so how 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 would we perform if it was the last performance we would kill it right we would give all the energy all our life to it right so i would think every performance like that and i love the fact that i get involved in myself and i dance my heart out when i'm on stage because i always believe that if only if you do it with your heart the audience will just connect yeah right so if you if you're not dancing your heart out you if you think about you know this is the next step uh, if you go blank so when you go basically blank on stage because you think about other factors so but when you're thinking that you want to dance your heart out and it eventually you'll connect to the audience so i love the fact that i'm just not vanilla while i'm performing that i'm just a devotee that performing for god so that's my favorite part so i just connect with god had especially about the last performance part like i've yeah. never thought about that before so i think that's super cool that that's the way yeah. like because you give your full energy and you give your full life you just you imagine tomorrow is the last day and this is your last performance how would you perform you give it your 100% not just 100% you will give your 1000% so even if there are hundreds of people thousands of people just don't think about the crowd just think about yourself and just dance it out so 
so it really helped me so when you do performances you will eventually dance your heart out so initial performance when you're doing your few item first few performances so you will obviously think about the next step you know you'll get little um scared on stage all of us have that fear uh, a fear of stage but then take that one movement they take that one moment before performing on stage and just think take a long deep breath and just think i'll give my 100% no matter what this is my last performance so i do that every performance especially i learned this on my run operation yeah so just the connection you happens with the audience practice like so much your body just automatically moves like without thinking that's what happened to me with i'm currently i think on the fourth or fifth item and mm-hmm. the items that i i think i'm not, like i practiced them so much so there was actually one item i think it was a uh, pranavakaram um the mm-hmm. anand the narth so i actually saw your dance teachers video on youtube and then i was like oh my god like i love this song like i have to do this and then i told my teacher and she said yes and so i like that song so much i don't know if it's the fact that your dance teacher danced to that song it made it more special but mm-hmm. i practice it day and like so much like my body just automatically moves to it like it yeah. just like, i can't like there's no mistakes like at all it's just like um i i think i was so like engrossed in it that like my body just automatically moves through like i just can't help it sometimes like i can't ever forget any steps <laughs> yeah yeah um what is your favorite item and why my favorite item is mudgare yeah. i love that item so there's a story behind this mudgare yashoda so when uh, i was learning dance uh, when i started learning dance when i was 5 uh, or 6 years old so mudgare yashoda was the first item i learned okay so uh, so i i used to love that item i used to love performing that item but it it, it was not like master garu's uh, yeah. choreography but it was because mudgare yashoda everybody knows that song right every everybody who knows dance who don't know dance they know there is mudgare show the song that exists in the world so that is my favorite song so when my uh, ranga pravesham repertoire was getting um, when she, um, sandhya ka decided my repertoire so i had another item instead of mudgare Do you remember? Uh, I think it was uh, Bama Pravesham, and then yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, it was it uh, got uh, shifted to uh, Brindavan Nilaya, and then one day, uh, so I I never asked I want this item in my repertoire, so I, I always gave because my teacher knows uh, more than me, right? So how I dance to an item. so what is best for me to perform on stage so i never asked sandhya ka what i wanted but deep inside my heart i wanted to do mudgare show of my rang operation yeah. so one day she comes and i i all, already learned like three items till then uh, so this is this was the fourth item and then one day she comes and tell me do mudgare show the instead of brindavan nilaya i'm like there's like somebody just- here my heart <laughs> and did somebody go and tell her that i wanted to do mudgare yashoda and then my dance colleagues were like sharmishtha and ganga they yeah. were like your prayers just worked yeah <laughs> so mudgare yashoda will be my favorite item for the rest of my life so it is one of my favorite item and uh, i really worked hard for that item to come out well on stage i genuinely sat and worked on my expression took a lot of videos so i troubled my mom when i learned mudgare so i was like take videos take videos take videos i want to correct all my expressions 
So Buddhagare Ishwara is very special for me. What is your favorite item? Oh my God, I can't even get started on that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm actually doing the master Mudugari for my Ranga Pravesham. So, yeah. So I really- The same thing, I did Master Garu Mudugari. I really like, um, so I actually learned a one before that my teacher choreographed. But I was hmm. like, I don't really have any master items. Like I, I think, I don't know what happened, but the dance itself, like, I feel like the movements are so unique. Like, that's just what I think. So I somehow connected to it. And also about the songs with this whole like Ranga Pravation thing, I would say mostly my teacher picks the songs, but she gives like some somewhat freedom to the parents and kids because here, <laughs> especially in my mom's like circle, they're all like, they're not they're more into like western stuff and like no one's actually like traditional so we sort of had um my mom talked to my teacher and we sort of like she gave me like options and she gave my mom options so we picked all songs which people know because otherwise like I don't know someone I know I've seen this before where they'd be sitting in the third row and they'd be just falling asleep and I'm like you know seriously <laughs> So that's one of the main reasons why my teacher actually lets, well, at least for me, she let um, me pick, or if there's something I like so much, she knows that it's not going to go away from my brain. So, <laughs> so that's how it got picked. But I think my favorite item would be like, I don't know, I have so many different favorite items. I like, um, I learned Nila Mega Sarya Tarangam, and that was one of my oh. That's actually the first Tarangam I learned, and I didn't learn anything after that. Now I'm doing Alokaye, but that was one of my favorites. Um, Nila Mayra the Sharira yeah. is a very beautiful item. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I like everything almost. Like, especially, um, I think, oh, actually, my teacher, she choreographed, just especially for me, she choreographed, um, what is it called again? Balaka Nakamaya Chela from that song from the movie. And I would say that's so, um, I would say that's a really special one for me. Like that's one of my favorite ones. And she added a little Sanchari with, you know, Shabari giving fruits to Rama. And she's like, oh, that's so cute. Yeah, so that's, I would say that's one of my most favorite items, but no, my items that I like are never ending. Like I like all of them, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, do you have any plans for dance in the coming future? Like, do you want to be a teacher or like a performing artist or anything like that? Okay, so right now, um, I don't have any plans of teaching right now because uh, I'm a young dancer. So I want to do a lot of performances. So I want to be a performing artist more than a teacher. So maybe 10 years or 15 years down the line, I would want to teach. But right now, my focus is uh, performing and do, doing a lot of performances and learning a lot of items and performing them. And uh, I want to do little, little, small, small choreographies and all too. Uh, so not like big choreographies. I want to do like maybe like small uh, choreographies. I want to do uh, my plans, you know, um, to do contemporary and Kuchpuri. I want to do a fusion like that. So yeah. I have a few ideas and I want to shoot them. So that is my major focus right now. So I have small, small videos planned, uh, planned for Instagram and YouTube. Other than that, I want to do a lot of performances, uh, learn a lot of items and improve uh, in Abhinaya. And yeah, so right now, no teaching plans as, as of now. So maybe 10 to 15 years down the line, all of us will become teachers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, see, we have to spread our art, right? Like how our teachers did. 
So they gave us a legacy. So we have to take it forward. So definitely, I would teach uh, down the line, but not but not right now. I want to focus on myself right now. Yeah, like develop develop first. You mean like yeah yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah, for me yeah. also. When you said about the spread stuff, so recently I've been looking into colleges because I'm a junior in high school. Hmm. So I don't know. I have like all these like not like conditions but like I have these specific like things that I want to go to college because here like there's so many options and there's so many things like one of the things was like I don't want to go to college in the middle of like a city like I wouldn't want to go to like I love Atlanta and everything but I wouldn't want to go to college like in the middle of the city like that's just not the vibe like I sort of want to go to like a small town college like where it's all like not like historic, but it's just like a small town. So one of the things I was thinking was, you know, when I had like this list of colleges I wanted to go to, like, um, I think somewhere in Tennessee, somewhere in Alabama, and somewhere like three hours away from where I live, like more like South Georgia. And when I thought about it, I went on the internet and I was like searched up if there's any teachers in that area. And I really, there could be, but I really didn't see like anything. Uh, especially um, more like South Georgia, um, the population is not very diverse. Um, it's more like black and white people. So <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm sure there are other Asians there, but I think one of the reasons for me to go like a little bit away to college would be like, I want to spread the art form where, it, where it's yeah. not like developed there. It's not really known. Um, also yeah. like one of the things like that I've heard from people, like if they, like if a if a Indian person that wants to learn classical dance moves to like a different part and then they try to find a teacher and they can't find anyone because in the area that they live it's not there, so I think <laughs> that's one of my main things like to going to college like somewhere else like not in this area where I live mm. because I live like what forty minutes away from Atlanta. There's a lot of teachers around here, um, and I just want to sort of like spread that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a beautiful thought, though. Um, why is it important for a dancer to understand the meaning of the story, learn the lyrics of the song that they are dancing to? It is very important. It is really very important. So I ha uh, have understood this during my Ranga Pravesham journey. Because, you know, uh, it is very important to learn the lyrics and the meaning to it. Because we're, uh, what we're doing on stage is we're actually telling the story without talking. Right? We're, we're moving our hands and legs and our eyes, everything, everything on your body. So uh, basically, you're conveying a story to the audience right so when you do not know the meaning and lyrics and not the story if you don't know the story behind those lyrics like what do you want to convey to the audience like it will go all over the place so i have understood this during my ranga pravesham journey because you know uh, what sandhyaka used to do for me in the journey of my ranga pravesham uh, during my practices Literally, I used to sit down with her with my lyrics of my song and the meaning. So each word to word meaning, we used to sit and I used to learn all my lyrics and the meanings to those lyrics. And she used to, uh, we used to research on the stories. She used to tell me a lot of stories behind that particular lyric. So, so what happens when you know the lyrics and meanings of the story? I mean, uh, meaning of the lyrics. So you'll easily convey to the audience. When you are convinced in your mind that this story has happened, it'll be very easier to the audience to understand while you're performing that story. Right? So it is very important. So I would say in my Ranga Pravishan practice, I would sit down and learn the stories more than dancing. So I would sit down with Sandhyaka. She used to tell me stories. That is that is when you feel your heart is dancing on stage. 
right yeah. so when you when you know the story when you know the lyrics and the meaning you will easily convey to the audience so it is major part so that is one practice i did for my rana operation so it is very important yeah i totally agree with that i think yeah. one of the main things my teacher does explain it pretty much in detail i think for one of the items she explained it so much that you know when i was doing the sanchari i think this was for kamakshi sukti if you know that mm. so we're like parvati where that guy comes i forgot the name but he um he gets turned into ashes because he tries he tries to like get shit with attention and everything i think yeah yeah she yeah. explained it so well that like when i'm doing this especially like the sanchari part like i know like sometimes when you do the sanchari parts like when you make the circles and stuff it's like you need to know like your character over there and then like yeah, i think that's exactly. the most important because if it's all jumbled up you'll not know like the audience won't know so like if shiva's here like parvati if she's like doing puja to him like she wouldn't be like really like behind him or like so close to him you know should be somewhere else and like so i think that's also like super important that i that's what i that's what my teacher taught me especially like with the sanchari parts that it's very important like of your of like the characters and like where they're at yeah it is very important so i have my ranga pravesham book it's like all the five items i did so i had word to word meaning i used to sit down and by heart those and i used to do a lot of researches about the story because once you know the story it is very easy to convince the audience and convey the message to the audience right so that is when you get the connect with the audience so you just can't go like okay i take i do the step now i do this expression when you feel it from the heart and you know what is the soul behind that lyrics and the meaning so it'll it'll come out so your heart will dance more than your leg yeah um so i sort of we sort of already went over this but um like how is your rung appropriation like repertoire decided so like can you talk more about like um like when it was coming closer like how you felt or like on the day of the program and stuff like that yeah so i have waited for my ranga pravesham day so badly for two years literally for two years so i have worked really hard uh, so i was waiting for that day to come so i was practicing i've learned all my five items with sandarka so i've learned all my five items and i was practicing daily so every day i used to practice my repertoire so uh, and then date was not decided and then in 2018 uh, february sanjay ka was like okay now you're ready we'll set the date so i thought we'll get you know like 3 to 5 months and then we decided uh, she was like okay let's do it in april okay that she told me on that she told me in february okay almost- february some yeah so february was okay uh, uh, april was fine okay, maybe i'll do it last weekend of uh, april so first date that was decided for my ranga preparation was april 25th or 20 26th in 2018 and then after 10 days sandhya ka was like you preponing your ranga preparation to april 8th oh and i was like okay so it has to happen so no matter what it has to happen so it it is okay if it got postponed now i was practicing and there was one week for my rang operation and i felt sick i bet because i was so nervous my heart fell in my stomach so i was so nervous that i felt sick i went to the doctor i had i got fever i got cold cough <laughs> so i was that nervous so there's a funny thing that ganga does says she says every performance you fall sick uh, sick i don't understand how 
so tell your mind that you're not performing today so that you won't fall sick and you know all this shit happen yeah. so so i felt sick before my rango preparation just a week before that and i took two days break of not doing dance and then i was back and then when that day came imagine i was like okay this is hard i got so nervous that day but i like i said just before entering on that stage everything every all my hard work and everything came in front of my eyes i was like so you have worked very hard just kill it on stage mm-hmm. just kill it so that is how my ranga preparation date <laughs> was decided yeah but yeah it was a good journey yeah it was lots of ups and downs <laughs> Yeah. Um what was I mean? Oh right. So about um like how I haven't I don't do that many performances in general like I think my parents my dad specifically wanted me to focus on education. So I haven't done like too many like performances and then I think ninth grade there was a big dance drama and then I couldn't do it because I fractured my ankle. So mm-hmm. it was just it was it was so bad so i mean i was like the person that you know when they like speak about like the i don't know like speak at the podium about like what the songs are i would be the person that would act it out because i finally came out of my cast and so my teacher's like i want you to be a part of this she was like when she found when she found out about that she was like sort of upset because she was like i really wanted you to do this like so bad so that happened and then i never really i don't know for some reason like when you dress up like in all that stuff i feel like it's so stressful like i like it yes but i feel like sometimes like if like your hair is like heavy or like <laughs> i don't know something like that i just feel like sometimes it's like harder to like um, you know, like if you know what i'm trying to say like yeah i do get it it's like you sometimes you have to get like I don't know if ever someone can ever get used to it but um it's just like so much stuff on your body that you have to carry yeah. you know it's like especially like even I saw in your Monica Shabnam video your earrings started falling off right so yeah. like, then even at some of my um like some of my uh dance students at my academy like one girl's earring fell off during throwing them and it fell on her plate and she started bleeding on her leg so oh. i don't know like just like and then like one of my other dance friends her necklace just like fell off so i don't know yeah, like yeah. those things like i just like i don't think it's scary but like you just it's just so like like it's so tenseful like if you know what i mean like it's so like like how, do you, do you remember when your earring started to fall off like how you yeah <laughs> so like i said when when you're so involved in what you're doing so i didn't know that my earring fell um but uh, my mother and my brother were on uh, they were like standing behind the stage and everything. they saw my earring fall and they got so scared that it'll go put on put my feet on that earring so they were like so, i think you're actually more conscious about that sometimes like i don't know what it is but i've seen people like it happened to me before where i would just like i think i could see it out of the corner of my eye and i would just like dance around it where i don't know yeah me, but yeah. yeah so i did i actually didn't know that my earring fell oh. i i knew something was just falling over i didn't care yeah because i can't do anything about that yeah now. i know you can't do it right So I didn't want to spoil my Manduka Shabdam. So I didn't. It was really good. I knew something was falling. I thought maybe my headset or, you know, my earring or some flower or something. But I didn't care because it is my Ranga Pradeshan. I have waited for two years. So I just don't want to spoil it with that earring falling. Yeah. So, yeah. I think also, like you said, you waited two years, like. Yeah. So I think in 8th grade my teacher told me she's like I think you're ready and she sort of wanted me to do it and then you know I came to high school and then everything just started to like go like haywire. I had like some like mental health struggles and all that. So I think with that it sort of like like put me off and then 8th grade I joined this um basketball team to play for mm-hmm. one season. And 
after that, I fractured my ankle. So it was just like everything started to mess up. Ever since eighth grade, now I'm going into 12th grade. Like she wanted <laughs> to do it and she thought I was ready. And she only tells when people are ready, basically. I mean, like sometimes parents, yeah. parents but I think also what I've noticed, I feel like when you're older and you do it, like you can, your expressions come out better and like stuff like that. True. If you know yeah. what I mean. So, yeah. so that, when you're mature and done, your emotions will come out. Yeah. Yeah. And also just, I've been waiting for a long time too, but so I'm taking the ACT or SAT. So we want to set a day after that. So I think <laughs> she wanted me. When are, you, when are you writing your exam? Um, exam, the SAT sum- exam. Yeah, the summer. So I need to score well. So one of the motivations for me is honestly, I'm not very like, I was never good at education. Like I was always like, mm-hmm. I did not like school. I would always like, um, I don't know, I wouldn't say fool around, but like, um, I just wasn't that kid that was um, like that like school. I was like never super smart. So I would say like for these tests, I get so like, I don't know. I just don't think, you know, when people say it's a life or death to get into college, I'm literally like, no, it's not. Like, it's not the end of the world. It's not. It's not. So one of my motivations Trust me, it's my not. Is, is just like, I get a good score the first time so we can set a rung of probation date because it, I've been waiting <laughs> for so long and it's not even that like I'm sort of glad that I didn't do it when I was like super young because I feel like even she told me that like my stamina and my expressions got better like in general hmm. so I've been waiting such a long time so it's just that like that test that I'm sort of working on right now so she wants me to do it this year so like I'm just like yeah I'm like I don't know I'm not like scared but like you know how people feel like like, it's a beautiful journey, you know. It's a beautiful journey. The practices you do, and and you know, uh, during your rung of relationship, you actually get closer to your teacher. Yeah. So that is really nice, also. So it is a very beautiful process. So don't miss any moment. Like live it, yeah. live it. You won't get your rung of relationship back again. So you, you do your rung operation only once in your life. It's like marriage, right? Yeah. So at least in marriage, you can you have second chances or third chances of getting, uh, doing marriage again. You can marry again. But then rung operation is just one rung operation. So yeah. Just live it to the fullest. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful journey. Yeah. One of the things that I noticed here, I don't know about India because I've never lived there, but people sort of often like rush to do it and then like mm. sort of after they think it's like the end I'm like no it's not the end like what are exactly. you actually it's not the end yeah so generally I think so in my dance school I would say there's one college student she finished her rung of probation in I think 2018 I think she was in college at that time and she's the most senior most student and I think there's a couple, very few high schoolers and um, mm. middle schoolers, but no, there's like no, no one's really older. Like everyone left because they're like, oh, like job or like college. I'm like, if you really like it, you'll find time. I don't think, yeah. I really feel like True. when they quit, they're wasting the teacher's time and you're wasting your time. It's just not, I just don't think it's worth yeah. it and starting it if you know. I mean, sometimes people have different circumstances and I understand, but you know, when people have that mentality, like after rung of probation, like I can just quit. Like, no. Yeah, this is gone. Yeah. See, yeah. rung of probation is just the beginning for your long dance career. Yeah. Yeah, so what is the point of uh, quitting dance after doing a rung of probation? Yeah, I just, like, I just never understood that. Um, yeah. Like it, I just think when you really like it, like you would definitely find time to do it. Yeah. Like, somehow, like True. no matter you what. You would definitely find time. Yeah. 